BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia, Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And speaking of that bonus podcast, that was coming out daily, but right now it's only going to be uh, recorded on Saturdays and Sundays as opposed to seven days a week. You know, trying to keep up with some other things as well. And if you're ever on BlackBoxNet88 on Instagram, just click on the Instagram TV page. Like, everyone's profile has their photo feed, and then there's also the Instagram TV video feed that you can find. They stopped uploading uh, the videos into the regular feed, so you got to find it on somebody's profile. But um, I digress from that, because today we're going to be talking about the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Slayings. And this is one that was requested by one of the listeners, this topic. So if you have any ideas for things that you would like to hear about on the channel, please drop something in the comments section below, and we will try to get to that. We've also been doing a series on JFK and the Mossad, and that's going to expand into a few other claims about the Israeli Mossad and their involvement with global affairs. So that one is still carrying on smoothly. But also with the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slayings, this is one that is definitely going to be a multi-part upload. And right now I'd like to give a shout out to some YouTube channels that I was following. Morbidology, True Crime and Mysteries, True Crime Stories, True Crime Queen, Brianne Clark. I've, I heard uh, my first video from Brianne Clark, this one here on the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Murders. She is a YouTuber. I would highly recommend you check out her channel. And there's a very important reason why I'm citing that video, and we're going to talk about that soon. Now, the reason why this has to be a multi-part series is because it's called the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Slaying, the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Murders. There are many of them. And when I was listening to this Morbidology podcast, which is available here on YouTube for free, they were talking about everything all at once. And they're just going from, OK, this murder happened, then that murder happened, then this murder happened, then that murder happened. And I was like, whoa, I can't follow I can't keep up with you. So think of this as the beginning of um, some future uploads that are going to happen on the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slayings. And I would just like to read off the names of the victims that uh, first we can say. So just because, um, you know, we have to honor the fallen Maureen and Sterling, Maureen Sterling and Yvonne Weber, excuse me. Yes, Maureen Louise Sterling and Yvonne Lisa Weber. They were both 12 years old. Kim Wendy Allen who was 19 years old, Laura Lee Cursa, who was 13 years old, a middle school student, Carolyn Davis, a 14-year-old runaway, Teresa Walsh, age 23, and then there are some other possible victims named Lisa Michelle Smith, age 17, and Jeanette Kamahele, K-A-M-A-H-E-L-E. I heard some people pronouncing her name Kamahel, but I think this one is pronounced Kamahele, and she was age 20. And the thing about Jeanette Kamahele is that her remains were never covered. Um, she is still listed as a missing person. Now, what we can say, though, is the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Slayings is one that I am rather new to. But on this channel here on Black Box Online Radio, we talk a lot about the Zodiac Killer. And if you'd like to follow some things about the Zodiac Killer, now's a good time to subscribe to Black Box Online Radio. And with this one, I can tell you the names of a couple of suspects very easily. One of them is Arthur Lee Allen the prime suspect in the Zodiac Killer mystery. And when we were doing our book discussion on Zodiac Unmasked by Robert Graysmith, he has this whole section in there about how he believes that Arthur Lee Allen was responsible for the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slayings. And there's um, an article from San Francisco Gate that really had something that was presented like very, very clearly as an introductory piece. And they just write, from 1972 to 1979, the bodies of eight young girls and women were found dumped in deep embankments and creek beds in rural areas surrounding Santa Rosa, California. So that's what we're going to be discussing. Arthur Lee Allen, the prime suspect in the Zodiac Killer mystery, did he have anything to do with this? Well, first and foremost, I should say that Arthur Lee Allen was allegedly exonerated because of DNA and fingerprints and side palm print testing on the Zodiac letters. A lot of people still believe that he was involved with the Zodiac Killer mystery in some way. I am not convinced that Arthur Lee Allen ever murdered anybody. And I say that because, I mean, I have to say it that way, because maybe he did some 
terrible things, but I am not convinced that he murdered anybody. I, I am convinced, definitely, that he was indeed a child molester. And one of the points that was brought up in that video by Breanne Clark was one that addressed the situation involving Arthur Lee Allen. And she was saying that she believed that he did not have anything to do with this because Arthur Lee Allen was a sex offender, but he was a pedophile and he was sent to a Toscadero hospital because he had molested a boy. And she was like, she's saying that the, the victims in this case are girls ages around 12 to early 20s. Arthur Lee Allen seemed to target people who were somewhat younger than that. And she also didn't see any evidence of the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings that this person was also sexually assaulting boys. This is quite similar to the profiler Sharon Hagen, who has a lot to say about the Zodiac Killer mystery, when she's like, the Zodiac Killer did not sexually assault the victims. I think that that is one thing that is almost well understood. The Zodiac Killer was more the type that would sneak up on people, fire some gunshots, with the exception of the Lake Berryessa stabbing. And I said there were some other suspects we could talk about that it, because of the Zodiac Killer mystery. And the next one is Dennis Land. He was the park ranger at Lake Berryessa. September 27th, 1969 was the Lake Berryessa stabbing. And Dennis Land was the first ranger that was on scene that found Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Ann Shepard. Thomas Henry Horn, who is the author of The Myth of the Zodiac Killer, as well as The Great Zodiac Killer Hoax, all of that stuff together. He accuses Dennis Land of being the stabber at Lake Berryessa, but also of committing the Santa Rosa hitchhiker, hitchhiker slayings, as well as possibly some other crimes in Germany near a military base where Dennis Land was stationed when he was deployed there. So when we look at this, first and foremost, I pulled up a map of California and Lake Berryessa is in Napa County. Santa Rosa is in Sonoma County. And I looked at that and I was looking, OK, I can see Napa County and, Santa, and Sonoma County, California, Santa Rosa and Sonoma County. These are relatively close together. These areas are close together. Arthur Lee Allen had a trailer in Santa Rosa, California. That's one of the reasons why he becomes a suspect in this and why Graysmith is trying to link him to these things. Dennis Land, once again, working in Napa County, very close by to Santa Rosa. So I was like, well, I would really hope that this isn't going to be only about geography. But one of the other points, I mean, it's actually a two part point about why Dennis Land could be a suspect is some of the victims in the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slayings were hogtied. If you look up anything to do with this case, you'll you'll hear those words hogtied. They were hogtied. Their hands were tied to their feet behind their backs. Something similar happened at Lake Berryessa on, with the Zodiac Killer. Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard, the victims in that incident, were more or less hogtied. Their hands were tied to their feet, and then they were stabbed. And I said that it was a two-part thing. Also, the person would have had to have been somewhat strong, because if we go back to that SF gate piece, we have something here where Someone sometimes these victims were carried up to 100 yards and then we're talking about carrying over rough terrain, disposing the victims in, in like uh, over embankments and such. So then they were expecting that this would not have been committed by a small man. This person would have had to have had a substantial amount of strength to carry these bodies over a long period of distance because they're not seeing any evidence of vehicles going that way. So, I mean, that is something else that we can say. The big problem with that type of thinking is simply, is that enough to say that somebody like Dennis Land, the park ranger at Lake Berryessa, is a genuine suspect? I'm going to look more into this. As we said, this is a beginning. Um, as for Arthur Lee Allen, I, I am just so uncertain that he ever murdered anybody. A child molester, yes. An unlikable character, yes. And even when you read the annoying things about Arthur Lee Allen and Zodiac Unmasked, about how he just sinks deeper and deeper into debt and he just doesn't really care, it's not very likable. But does that make him a murderer? No, I am not convinced at all. So, so let's look at some other things that we can say about the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slaying. And we're going to do this by jumping over to a website that was made for this. And it is called Santa Rosa Hitchhiker murders.com. I mean, I think it's very, very useful to have 
the websites like this. And let's read off their introductory card. The purpose of this website is to present through vintage, digitally restored newspaper articles and documents. The accurate details of these crimes between 1972 and 1973 in Santa Rosa, California, experienced the killings of seven women whose murders have never been solved. An eighth probable victim disappeared and her body has never been located. And that, of course, would uh, be Jeanette Kamahele, as we uh, said at the beginning. All of the victims were known to hitchhike, a popular mode of transportation at the time. And these murders became known as the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Murders, also known as the San Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Slayings. About hitchhiking, it really did seem that it was much more popular then than it is now. I think that with California, it is quite different than some of the things we experienced when we did our upload on Amber Tuckero and the Highway of Tears. And if you haven't heard that one yet, I'm going to include a link to that in the description box here. And that is done in more of the um, old-fashioned black box style. And if you're listening to a pure podcast like that on YouTube, I like to turn on the closed captions because I think it's easier to follow along. But once again, we have an upload on Amber Tuckerow and the Highway of Tears, which is talking about in Western Canada. Many of the cities are heavily spaced apart and transportation centers are actually somewhat difficult to access. So people would try and navigate that area via hitchhiking. I think some things are similar in California, but one of the things in the first video I ever saw on the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Slayings was that Jack Kerouac wrote a book called On the Road, and it um, romanticized this passion for traveling and such. And I think it was, was it Jeanette Kamahele? One of the victims that I had been reading about was even, they were even saying that she regularly hitchhiked to and from her college campus. She did it almost every single day, and perhaps maybe one of the days uh, she did not come back. Let's keep reading here. The so-called Santa Rosa hitchhiker murders have been linked to other crimes that occurred in the late 1960s and 70s, where the facts have been distorted to meet criteria of the particular murderer, thought to have committed them, most notably the Zodiac Killer and Ted Bundy. The murders remain un unsolved. Now, let's say something about Ted Bundy, because... First and foremost, we can definitely say that Ted Bundy sexually assaulted his victims. We can definitely say that Ted Bundy targeted women. Ted Bundy also targeted brunette women, and it seems like a lot of these women are indeed brunettes. But um, what I would also say is, um, I just heard it so clearly laid out in that uh, Brianne Clark video when she was saying that Ted Bundy was exonerated from this case, more or less, more or less, because... They found his credit card history, you know, because Ted Bundy, Bundy was captured and that all of this information was available to the courts. And they learned that he was in Washington state on the dates of many of these activities. So he was um, hundreds of miles away from anything to do with Northern California. And they do have documentation that shows on the days in which these events were believed to have taken place. Ted Bundy was not there. We've done a couple of uploads about Ted Bundy here on this channel. I have to tell you, I don't think that this is anything like what Ted Bundy would have done. Um, I mean, Ted Bundy had a variety of ways about luring women over to um, to to get close to him. But with some of these things, it just it just doesn't appear to be his signature. He was much more um, much rougher, I think, than some of these things. But I should also say, though. That if we're going to look at the Zodiac Killer, and you, you heard the uh, title card there, they said the two main ones, Ted Bundy and the Zodiac Killer. I would say that a big difference between this is that the Zodiac Killer did not dispose of the victims. No matter who you think the Zodiac Killer is, it, forget Arthur Lee Allen, forget Dennis Land. The Zodiac didn't move the bodies of the victims. And when you hear these possibilities that they're saying that this guy would have had to have carried um, a dead girl's body maybe a hundred yards and then dropped her somewhere. Where is that in the Zodiac Killer mystery? Not at Lake Harmon Road, not at Blue Rock Springs, not at Lake Berryessa, and definitely not at the Paul Stein murder in Presidio Heights because only a man was present there. Also, is it possible that many of these victims are too young to be, um, to be the work of the Zodiac Killer? It is true that Betty Lou Jensen was only a teenager. I believe she was 16. I want to say that David Arthur Faraday, the male victim at Lake Herman Road, was 17 and that Betty Lou Jensen was 16. But uh, don't quote me on that one 100%. I mean, we're talking about some of these girls were 12 years old 
is that also outside the realm of Zodiac activity? In short, if you can tell by the way that I'm structuring this, I do not believe that, um, do not believe that the Zodiac killer was involved with this. But on the Santa Rosa Hitchhikers website, they only have two suspects listed, the Zodiac killer and Ted Bundy, and they provide the composite sketch of the Zodiac killer as somebody. But, um, I think that they're going to be, um, there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be throwing out some wild theories about this one, the way that they talk about every true crime case. And they, they kind of alluded to that here on the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Murders website when they were saying that a lot of people just want to take their suspect and then they want to create this almost super conspiracy about this. But um, they, one of the good things about this website is they have an enormous page of articles and we could just even, we could do countless uploads just going through um, the articles that they have posted. And right now, what we're going to do is we're going to pull one of them up that is going to be on a report about the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slayings from Sonoma County. And this one was published in a publication called The Press Democrat. Four de decades after seven bodies of young women were found in the 1970s, authorities seek answers. A 16-year-old boy hiking through the wooded hills of northeast Santa Rosa in 1972 stumbled upon a human skull, bleached from the elements he thought it was an artifact, but the skull was from an but the skull was not from an ancient burial site, as the youth imagined. It was the sign of a young life brutally cut short. They were just little baby girls, said Glenn Frost of the talking about a, the adolescents, actually. And, uh, I mean, they did follow up there, but, I mean, baby girls, he's saying that very, um, oh, that's almost figurative language, talking about people who were 12 and 13, and their remains were discovered while they were with a friend. From early 1972 to mid-1979, the bodies of seven young girls and young women were found in rural Santa Rosa, buried or dumped along steep embankments or in creek beds. I have to insist, where is that in the confirmed incidents in Zodiac activity? Even if you're going to go back to Riverside, California, 1966, and look at the murder of Sherry Jo Bates, there's this wacky theory out there that Sherry Jo Bates was abducted for six hours and held captive somewhere, and then they brought her back to this alleyway by the Riverside City College Library, and then her throat was slit there. I don't personally think that that happened. Um, but even if you look at the murder of Sherry Jo Bates, which is a possible incident in Zodiac activity, an unconfirmed incident, mind you. And we are going to talk more about that as we get closer to the anniversary of that one on October 30th. What we can say about that is the body also wasn't moved. It, even in the um, alleged incidents, like the Zodiac killer just doesn't seem to move the bodies. I don't see any any real Zodiac involvement in this at all. But we are going to explore some other theories involving Arthur Lee Allen as well as Dennis Land in the future. All were found nude. Also, again, Betty Lou Jensen, Darlene Farron at Blue Rock Springs, and Cecilia Shepard at um, Lake Berryessa, their bodies were not found nude. Some had been raped, strangled, or hogtied. Now, even if you're going to look at Dennis Land as a suspect, we said Dennis Land is Thomas Henry Horn's suspect for the Lake Berryessa stabbing in, um, on uh, September 27th of 69, the park ranger at Lake Berryessa. Was Cecilia Shepard sexually assaulted? No, almost. There's absolutely no evidence of that. She also survived the Lake Berryessa stabbing and did not pass away until two days later. No reports of her being sexually assaulted, and she definitely wasn't found nude. I mean, I think that, well, that type of uh, information is just isn't present in the uh, Lake Berryessa stabbing. Also, though, I mean, if Dennis Land was the park ranger at Lake Berryessa, and then he left for 30 minutes, took off the Zodiac hood got cleaned up and then came back to find Brian Hartnell and be the first ranger on site. Um, I don't even know if there would have been time. Like, so like the person wouldn't think there would be enough time to completely disrobe Cecilia Shepard. And bear in mind, she was hogtied before any of that could have taken place. I just do not see a connection as of yet, but we will look at things more in the future. Waves of detectives have tried solving the cases, particularly when a serial homicide suspect emerges somewhere, such as a recent Marin County case. And this happens all the time. They find a serial killer and they're like, hmm, how can we connect this serial killer to this crime spree? But that doesn't always work. The Sonoma County 
1970 murders have haunted not just the family members, but also detectives, friends, and even strangers who became connected to the case. It firmly sticks in my mind, said Frost, who runs a Santa Rosa concrete firm, and I'm 55, going on 56 years old. For nearly 40 years, the seven case files have slowly expanded. The emergence of DNA evidence has led another generation of detectives to search for clues. And we've seen what happened with the Golden State Killer. DNA can prove to be very valuable. Perhaps we will learn something about the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slayings. This year, they have filed, they have sifted through evidence, preserved through the decades in the freezers, and submitted possible DNA samples to national databases. The science is different now, and we're hoping that something comes back, said Sergeant Lieutenant, sorry, Lieutenant, excuse me, said Lieutenant Dennis O'Leary. And this is, once again, from an, a publication called PressDemocrat.com, written by Julie Johnson and Randy Rossiman. All right, big thank you to them. And if you would like to visit this website, Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Hitchhikermurders.com, Santa Rosa Hitchhikermurders.com, they have an enormous amount of articles. We just read one of them right there. And we will go through some more of them as we keep exploring the subject. As you see, I am somewhat skeptical about the uh, Zodiac Killer connections in this. And I think that the Ted Bundy connections have been almost dismissed entirely. But, you know, we are going to try and do this in somewhat of an objective way, approaching it with an open mind, and we will see what we find. What do you have to say about this? Do you see anything that is going on with the Zodiac Killer mystery here in the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker slayings? Do you see any Zodiac Killer connection at all? And if you have something to say, please drop something in the comments section below. If you like this upload, you can hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. And I will see you guys on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Until next time.